Hello my dear friends hello my dear listeners how are you all i hope you are doing really well and you have started with a positive vibe this week so let's make this week a better one than the previous ones so with this good thought let's start the story which we have started yesterday right that uh, story Uh, was taken from bengal fairy tales written by francis bradley bradley bird in the year 1920 and was illustrated by obonindranath thakur this book was published by john lynn the bodley head in london and in new york it was published by john lynn company this book has several stories and all those stories are segregated in three main parts the first part which narrates the story told by bhavaghure the traveler and in this segment from this segment we are actually reading the third story buddhibanto the boy weaver so what happened next we we left buddhibanto in a situation where due to the literal obedience towards his mother's advices he made a mess and at present he is uh, in the storehouse or store room where uh, he was smeared with molasses and rice as well as somehow he was diagnosed that he is he was possessed by some ghost or spirit so what happened next let's start the friend jaggu was awake all the while but he remained silent up till then he had not thought it advisable to betray the secrets of his friend but when he saw that the scene was painful beyond endurance he revealed the facts of the case and the whole house rang with the noise of laughter nothing like this had happened in their experience before and they were all much amused the excitement being over they crowded into the pantry and found out hero sitting on his haunches and grinning at the alarm he had caused they washed him clean made him change his clothes and cracked jokes at him but he still remained puffed up with pride at the consternation he had caused next morning the matter was forgotten and the attentions the son-in-law received were as usual his relations by marriage pressed him to remain with them a few days more but jaggu disgusted with the night's occurrence took leave of his friend and returning home told buddhi's mother of his folly his mother was greatly distressed on her son's account and anxiety for his safe return made her very miserable she trembled with fear lest he having no protector but himself should run into danger and finally she made up her mind to go to his father-in-law's house and bring her darling home even though according to the custom of her country it was not the correct thing to do she had the most favorable day pointed out to her on the almanac by a brahmin and started on her journey but that journey she was not destined to complete for having passed over about half the distance she found her son lying dead a little way off from the beaten path it can be easily conceived that a shock she received at the sight wild with grief she beat her head against the ground tore her hair uttered cries of lamentation that rent the air and sang a dirge of the thousand and one good traits of her son's character she was however gifted with a strong mind and so she soon collected herself and began to think of the removal of the body for cremation she returned home 
to bring her neighbors to the spot in order that they might help her to perform the last duties to her son and in a short time nothing remained of poor buddhimanto on earth save a heap of ashes no one at the time knew the cause of the boy's death but the narrator of the story by means of letter inquiries ascertained the circumstances under which the tragic event had happened and from him we have heard that the poor weaver was returning home that same morning when on reaching a palmyra tree where two roads branched off in different directions he feared that by taking the longer one by accident he would be acting contrary to his mother's advice to take the shortest path and he therefore climbed up to the top of the tree to get a view of the two roads having done so he laid hold of one of the branches and swung himself down so as to fall on his feet on the other side of it whereupon one of the fatal sisters attempted to cut the thread of his life as he fell his feet touched the head of a man underneath him mounted on an elephant the man laid hold of our hero's feet and the elephant moved quickly away it was a terrible sight buddhi hanging from the top of the palmyra tree with the newcomer dragging him down but the weaver too stupid to understand the danger of the position began interrogating his companion in distress who he was whence he had come and to whom the elephant belonged the man aware of their dangerous position hastily exclaimed i have never seen such a fool as you both of us are on the point of death and insisted of calling on the gods you indulge yourself in frivolous talk don't disturb me i am calling on makali to save me but the foolish buddhi only laughed ha ha that's not that's no use he said your life is in my hands refuse to answer and i will let go my hand i will let go my hold you know what that means the other man was naturally furious what a paste you are he exclaimed there is no escape from you however so listen i am a blind man and have hitherto lived on my earnings as a singer last evening i entertained the king of this place with my songs and he feasted me during the night and dismissed me this morning with the elephant you have seen now you are satisfied i hope trouble me no more not yet my friend said buddhi i must hear the song that brought you so valuable a reward you had better begin singing at once but the man protested i entreat you to spare me he said don't draw me away from my meditations you can't escape me so easily replied buddhi remain silent a minute longer and i will let go my hold see i am just on the point of doing so hear the song then exclaimed the unfortunate man and then go to the infernal regions saying this the man began to sing after he had sung for about a minute the foolish buddhi took his hands off the branch to clap them in approval whereupon down fell both of them with a tremendous thud and their souls were carried to the feet of yama some of the blind man's friends in the palace chanced to be passing that way a little after the occurrence and they removed his body to dispose of it with fitting funeral rites but the body of the weaver who was a perfect stranger to them they left lying where they found it a fool has no honor even in his death so my dear friends this is the end of our story and from this story we can understand that sometimes we treat our life 
we take decisions we behave so literally that it actually makes us fool so we have to understand the hidden uh, meaning or the actual meaning the actual information those words are actually trying to convey to us so that we can perceive the actual meaning of each and every word so with this good wish i am saying you goodbye for today so we will start another story in the next week till then be happy be good be jolly and be safe and be healthy shubham astu